Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, today's topic is biochemistry of lipid lowering drugs. The learning objectives of this session would be to know the definition of lipid lowering or hypolipidemic drugs, to list the lipid lowering drugs and to understand the mechanism of action of lipid lowering drugs and to apply the knowledge of the rationale of lipid lowering drugs in different case scenarios. Before we move on to the actual topic of biochemistry of lipid lowering drugs, I would like to introduce to you to the two different case scenarios. Case scenario 1, read it for you. A 40 year old moderately obese businessman visits family doctor and complaint of repeated episodes of discomfort in the chest often associated with breathlessness and sweating lasting for 5 to 10 minutes duration following climbing stairs since 3 months. Taking note of his lifestyle and BMI, the family doctor examined and requested for ECG and blood investigations. The blood reports suggested a deranged lipid profile. The family doctor promptly referred him to a cardiologist and coronary angiogram was done. He was diagnosed to have angina and was advised medication and regular follow. What is this deranged lipid profile? What is the treatment of deranged lipid profile? We will move on to the case scenario 2. We will answer these questions at the end of the session. A 32 year old obese businessman with a sedentary lifestyle went for a routine checkup before a foreign trip abroad. His blood investigations revealed a serum triglyceride level of 450 milligrams per deciliter and total cholesterol of 200 milligrams per deciliter. A physician prescribed fibrates treatment. What is the rationale for this treatment? We will try to understand this by going through the topic, today's topic, what are lipid lowering drugs? To define lipid lowering drugs are also called as hypolipidemic drugs, reduce cholesterol, triglyceride and specific lipoproteins in blood. They are also referred to as anti-hyperlipidemic drugs. High levels of cholesterol triglyceride and specific lipoproteins in the blood are termed as hypercholesterolemia, hypertriglyceridemia and hyperlipoproteinemia respectively. What are the impact or what, what do they cause? Hypercholesterolemia, hypertriglyceridemia and specific hyperlipoproteinemia such as LDL that is low density lipoprotein and VLDL that is very low density lipoprotein are the specific hyperlipoproteinemia which promotes or the positive factors for the development of or high they are the high risk for coronary artery disease, myocardial infarction and stroke. Now coming to the lipid lowering drugs. We, we will list them. The first and the foremost are the statins which are well established in treatment and most widely used in the clinical scenario today. The statins for example are atorvastatin, fluvastatin, lovastatin, provastatin, rosuvastatin and simvastatin. All these are the common drugs which are used in day to day practice. These are fungal inhibitors of the cholesterol synthesis. They are, these drug statins are the structural analogues of HMG-CoA. 
and what is this HMG CoA is the beta hydroxy methyl glutaryl CoA which is an intermediate in the cholesterol synthesis and these statins act as reversible competitive inhibitors of an enzyme called HMG CoA reductase which is a most important enzyme in the cholesterol synthesis. Let us see the mechanism of action. So, this is the brief outline of cholesterol synthesis where the starting material is acetyl CoA. Acetyl CoA is converted to HMG CoA and HMG CoA by several steps again will be converted to mevalonate and again further many steps we finally get cholesterol. At what level cholesterol synthesis is inhibited by these statins is to be understood. So, the enzyme HMG CoA reductase converts HMG CoA to mevalonate. This these drugs the group of statins inhibit the HMG CoA reductase as they are structural analogues of HMG CoA and competitively they inhibit the HMG CoA reductase. So, therefore, cholesterol synthesis can be reduced. These statins are used to treat or to decrease high plasma cholesterol levels in patients with hypercholesterolemia. However, long term use of statins may cause myalgia, myopathy and also rhabdomyolysis. Coming to the second group that is the fibrates, for example, they are clofibrate and gemfibrocell are the trade names. How do they act? They decrease the triglyceride level by preventing the hepatic inflow of free fatty acids from the pathway of esterification and promote oxidation. So, these have a specific role in the treatment of hypertriglyceridemia. Coming to the next one that is the bile acid sequestrants. The, for example, it is cholesterol which contains cholesteramine resin. How do they act is they block the reabsorption of bile acids. For lowering the low LDL cholesterol by sequestering the cholesterol containing bile acids released into the intestine and preventing their reabsorption from the intestine the bile acids are the reabsorption of bile acids are blocked thereby this bile acids sequestrants act. So, bile acid sequestrants have a side effect that they may cause gastrointestinal complications such as fullness, flatulence and so on. Also absorption of other drugs they prevent the absorption of other drugs and vitamins from the gut. Coming to the next group that is the phytosterols which are derived from the plant sterols. The cytosterol is one of them which decreases the cholesterol level by blocking the absorption of cholesterol from the GI tract. The next one is the probucol which increases the LDL catabolism thereby increasing the LDL concentration via receptor independent pathway. Although it increases the LDL catabolism and concentration of LDL, probucol by its antioxidant properties prevent the accumulation of oxidized LDL in arterial walls, thereby preventing the atherosclerosis or further damage to the blood vessels. The next important one is the nicotinic acid or niacin which reduces the influx of free fatty acids by inhibiting lipolysis in the adipose tissue thereby inhibiting the VLDL production by the liver. The next small groups are this azetambe and lometapide. The azetambe is a selective inhibitor of dietary cholesterol absorption and lometapide a microsomal triglyceride transfer protein inhibitor are the newer drugs. Azetambe is although it is a selective inhibitor of dietary cholesterol absorption, it, its action is not similar to what it out of phytosterols. So, these are the drugs in the hypolimidic group of drugs, lipidemic drugs. So, we have 
uh, we'll come back to the case scenario and see which of these is beneficial for the first case scenario. So, what was the question in this case scenario we read was the what was the deranged lipid profile? What is the treatment of deranged lipid profile? To know this, first we will understand what is a normal lipid profile and what are the normal expected range of lipid parameters in the lipid profile. So, in a fasting normal lipid profile should have a total cholesterol of less than 200 milligrams per deciliter, triglycerides of less than 150 milligram per deciliter, LDL cholesterol up to 100 milligrams per deciliter, HDL cholesterol of 40 to 60 milligrams per deciliter, VLDL is up to the 35 milligrams per deciliter and non HDL cholesterol of 130 milligrams per deciliter. These are the normal ranges. What happens if there is deranged lipid profile or abnormal lipid profile as seen in this patient? So, in this patient uh, total cholesterol was 280 milligrams per deciliter, triglycerides was in the normal limit. LDL cholesterol was also high that is 135 milligram per deciliter. HDL cholesterol has reduced from the normal that is 28 milligram per deciliter. VLDL is 25 milligrams per deciliter. Non-HDL cholesterol was 252 milligrams per deciliter. So, when we look at this, this picture of increased total cholesterol, increased LDL cholesterol, decreased HDL cholesterol, and the normal VLDL and also the non-HDL cholesterol is also increased. So, what is the treatment? What are the targets of the treatment? We have to bring down the total cholesterol from 280 to up to 200. Triglycerides are normal. So, it is not, we need not treat the triglyceride level. We have to target the cholesterol and also the LDL cholesterol which is high. So, to bring back to this, the treatment is to give statins to bring down the total cholesterol level and by this some uh, we can add niacin also to bring down the LDL cholesterol level. Treatment of hypercholesterolemia or dyslipidemia in this patient is by statins. Coming to the case scenario 2, here the physician prescribed fibrates treatment, what is the rationale of this treatment? So, the hypertriglyceridemia seen here that is 450 milligram per deciliter was to be treated. So, that what were the fibrates which were used is the clofibrate or demfibrosid and also niacin could be treated for the uh, effect of to bring down the triglyceride level and also VLDL levels. Let us see some multiple choice questions if you can answer at the end of this. So, the first question comes here that is the enzyme uh, competitively inhibited by st statins in cholesterol synthesis is which one is can you think of? The answer is HMG CoA reductase. Whereas, the other enzymes HMG CoA lyase, HMG CoA synthase are the uh, enzymes which come under ketone body synthesis and beta ketothiolase also is in ketone body metabolism. So, the answer is HMG CoA reductase. Coming to the second MCQ, the following is used in the treatment of hypertriglyceridemia. So, there is a list of hypolipidemic drugs which one is to used for hypertriglyceridemia? Among this is again clofibrate which is used for the treatment of hypertriglyceridemia which comes under the fibrates. The third question here, an inhibitor of the enzyme HMG CoA reductase is cholesteramine, lovastatine, nicotinic acid and aspirin which is the right answer the inhibitor of enzyme HMG CoA reductase is statin and the answer is B that is lower statin. The next one is this nicotinic acid acts as a hypolipidemic drug by the following 
except so you have to pick up the which statement is not favoring this that is nicotinic act acid acting as a hypolipidemic drug this inhibiting lipolysis in the adipose tissue inhibiting cholesterol synthesis reducing the influx of free fatty acids inhibiting VLD VLDL production by the liver. So, the answer is B because nicotinic acid does not have a role in inhibiting cholesterol synthesis. The all the other factors that is inhibiting lipolysis in the adipose tissue, reducing the influx of free fatty acids, inhibiting the VLDL production by the liver are all towards favoring that nicotinic acid acts as a hypolipidemic drug. Thank you.